All right, we'll go ahead and get started. A reminder to please uh, silence your phones or radios or just anything that may make noise. Uh, and then once you get the mic to uh, get it, ask a question, make sure you give your name and affiliation. Uh, we will start with a statement from Florida State Head Coach Lonnie Alameda, then go to questions for Florida State players Michaela Edenfield, Mac Leonard, and Catherine Sandercock, and then uh, dismiss the players, then go back to questions for uh, Head Coach Lonnie Alameda's statement. Yeah, um, I guess first off, congratulations to OU. Um, they're just firing on all cylinders. It's it's pretty cool. I think uh, a lot of people are texting me throughout, you know, like a lot of people don't like um, that one team's winning all the time. And, um, you know, I get a little vibe sometimes of like, um, you know, take down the machine. And we gave our best <laughs> for that. Um, but they're really good, and Oklahoma does a really good job, and they do a good job in, in all cylinders from, you know, recruiting to developing to um, meeting the NIL to development of program and team. And um, it's really an honor to compete against uh, the highest level, and we talked about that today. And, um, you know, it can be frustrating at times or it can raise our game, and uh, it's raising our game. It's making me a better coach, and um, it was just really cool. So hats off to them. Um, I think Oklahoma City OU for hosting this event, um, the NCAA, uh, we had a great experience. Our student athletes had a great experience. Um, I know us as a coaches association work really hard at trying to make this a, a special experience for players. And um, when we were here in 21, we were playing late night, and then we made those rule changes, and we had a ton of rest, a ton of opportunities to um, be better when we came out and that was the whole goal is to make the best on TV and I'm really proud of us as an organization and the NCAA for working and, and with us and, and Oklahoma City and everyone's a part of us. It was, it's really awesome. So we're going to keep pushing the needle because we want this game to be great and I just uh, recognize that part of it and um, I think to my staff, administration, Mr. Alford, Laura, Cindy, everyone that's here and supported us. Um, we've had a lot of people here for the entirety and some that came on uh, late. Um, and we just have such great support in Tallahassee. And um, we're just so lucky to be able to wear the garnet and gold. And we, we feel the family core values all the time. And I'm very grateful for that. And lastly would be Team 40. It's It's been a ride. I know it's been a acronym, but it has been a ride, and um, I couldn't be more proud. Um, to my right, um, I just think that uh, these ladies have done an incredible job, but they're representing a team that set out in August to be better, and we were better, and they made our program better, and they're leaving a mark for that. So before I start to cry, that's my <laughs> my opening statement. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll start with questions for players on the third round on the left. IrishOFLWarchant.com. I was wondering if each of you guys could – um, just like Coach just said, reflect on how far you guys came from last year, not even making supers, to, to what you guys accomplished this year. Uh, Mac, you can start and come up. Um, I think this team, we learned a lot from supers or from regionals last year, getting cut um, really early on by Mississippi State. We took the time to rewatch the games together as a squad, and it was really hard. I hadn't rewatched any of the games since then, so that was the first time for myself. And the motivation and the passion that returns to you and just the grit and the hard work that you put in in the fall and then early spring and then um, mid-season we had tough conversations. All year we've been having tough conversations about holding each other accountable and that's what we did. Um, we worked really hard as a squad to be there for our left and our right and constantly have each other's backs. And um, I know that that's a lot stems from last year and I'm really grateful looking back that we had that um, – motivation in our hip pocket like to have that going into this season and to leave it all out there on this biggest stage is um undescribable so I'm just very grateful yeah I mean we definitely learned a lot about ourselves that year um I really like the analogy that uh, a successful team is like a big um puzzle piece um, and you're trying to create that big picture, but if you don't take care of your own individual piece and all the edges and the curves and where you have to fill in where other people don't and being able to open up and learn from that year and being able to use it into this year has been really big for us individually and um, really, really proud of Team 40, and I'm <laughs> glad that <laughs> we had all the puzzle pieces together for sure. I think uh, this team is special, and uh, I hope you guys saw the big picture. Yeah, um, I mean, learned so much from Team 39. 
And it was really, really hard to lose at regionals. It was really hard. I mean, I couldn't even watch Super Regionals um, last year. But, I, you know, I was grateful that I had another year to put the jersey on. And um, it was really hard to say goodbye to Sid and Danielle and for them to end their careers like that. But, I mean, what they gave to this program was just so amazing. And um, it really – it just – set up a foundation for Team 40 to thrive. And I think that we really took what we could from last year's team and we ran with it this year. And, you know, we didn't let the little things go. We talked about them. We fought for them. We, I mean, this team, like, it's just incredible what we've been able to do. So I'm just really, really proud of Team 40. But it, it, it started with Team 39 and with Sid and Danielle and just the legacy that they left with us and how we were able to build off of that so just thankful for them and um thankful for the foundation that they left for us more questions for players we'll go third row on the right brett nevin knows 247 mac you talked before this series began about how this has kind of been how long he gave you a start kind of you never imagined that you would be on this stage and through three innings last night and then the homer tonight. Just what has this week meant to you? Um, it's been a lot. I've said it, like I said, I think last night, um, living a dream I didn't know I had. So to be able to do that and not alone, not just make it to the World Series, but to make it to the Championship Series is a lot <laughs> about um, our program and just the people behind me. And I think that I'm so grateful for these memories. Um, T. Cam often said, like, the, the greatest memories are yet to come and um, made a lot of great memories in this postseason. And I've made a lot of really great friends through all these uh, memories and a lot of uh, a lot of times I'm not ready to give up yet. But to finish it here on this stage means the world and especially having my mom and my sister in the crowd and um, my stepdad and family and friends. Meant a lot. It's definitely not easy, um, but I'm just like extremely grateful that I could be here with these people in this program. They've given me such a new leash on life and um, a new, it's just an outlet to be myself, um, genuinely. And I can't, I'm not. I'm just so grateful. I I, I don't really have words. Third row on the left now. Kat, uh, could you just talk about the challenge of facing their lineup? And you got out of that jam early on, a um, couple of good defensive plays, and you guys get out of it. But it just they just they throw so many weapons at you. How difficult is it to maneuver against that lineup? Um, yeah, incredible lineup, great team. Um, they it, it's tough. You know, the bases loaded, no outs. All the momentum was on their side, and we were able to get out of it with no runs. And, I mean, just what an awesome moment. Um, what amazing defense. Like, it was just – that was so, so fun. And then, um, I mean, they're just – they're tough outs. You, they keep you on your toes the entire time, which is great. But just – for me as an athlete, like I've just, I'm very competitive and like I've just always wanted to put my skills to the test. So just everything that I've worked on for the past five years showing up today and um, being able to put that to the test against one of the hardest line, one of the hardest lineups in college softball has, was such a fun challenge. And, you know, I um, gave up a couple solo shots and then, you know, they got another run across and they're just, you know, they're a good ball club. It's, it's tough to face them, but I'm really proud of myself and really proud of the team and just what we were able to do today and just the fight that we showed and how we just stayed in it and stayed in it. And that's what we've been saying all season long is just stay in it, stay in it. So, um, yeah, it's challenging, but it's what you want as an athlete. So, yeah. Okay, we've got a second round on the left. SM Cassim, Tallahassee Democrat. Um, Michaela, talk about the two seniors to your um, sides mean to you, and what kind of what lessons you're going to carry over to Team 41 from them. Oh man, so you had to give me a tough one, huh? <laughs> uh, let's see if I can get through this without crying. Um, Mac, God, here we go. <laughs> Whew. So Team 40, um, it's one team, one year, one season. 
and I'm grateful for these girls to my left and my right. Max done a great job of accountability and knowing and teaching me what it's like to live above the line and um, definitely have been able to, to try to model after her with keeping other people accountable. And I think it's just been really cool to learn from her. And I've only had two years with her, so I can only imagine what it would be like to have more. Um, but it's a constant mentor and a piece. I am so grateful to have her as an upperclassman. And being able to work with her these past two years have been great, both on and off the field. And Kat. You see Kat, and you think of her as the heart of this team and it's it's very true but you don't see the stuff that she does behind the scenes and to the freshman me that she uh <laughs> reeled in <laughs> I, I i quite literally wouldn't be here without her and um the things that she's done for me and for this team for this coaching staff and for this for fsu the community as a whole. Um, it's been really awesome to see from me watching her as a high schooler to be able to think that, oh, wow, I get to be on the same field as her. I get to be on the same team and then being able to catch her <laughs> and being able to be a part of two amazing seasons catching her and being able to learn from Anna Shauna and to think that I was going to be the one to have to replace Anna Sheldon, and I'm not Anna Sheldon, and Kat made sure that, like, I could be myself and grow to be myself as a better individual for her it has been awesome, and I've just been so grateful for everything that she's done for me, and I'm trying to take every bit of what these two have given me, and uh, wanting to be the upperclassman for that incoming freshmen, for my fellow upperclassmen, for everyone, because, I mean, it takes a team, and it's going to be all of us in for Team 41. Yeah. More questions for players? Third round on the left. The for right. Kat, Lonnie talked the other day about you guys are at this point because of the, the culture, and that's what you guys rely on. Just as someone who's been in the program for five years, what is it about Florida State that, that makes it such a, such a special place to be for you guys? Um, I mean, Kocha, honestly. <laughs> like, you talk about Kocha, or you talk about culture, and Kocha has built that. Um, so it's, it's just a, such a special thing to be a part of. I mean, you just you don't get experiences like this in your life and I think coming in as a freshman like we were talking about it before like you just don't get it you don't get it until you really get it and just it's so much bigger than softball it changes you as a human being and like I have changed so much as a human being um you know more it it's just it's so much more than a sport but just the family aspect the the living of the core values we, you know we don't write it down on signs and like put it up in the locker room. Like, we really live it. We talk about it. We hold each other accountable to it. Um, I mean, it just, it forces you to grow, and it forces you to be better. And, like, I have just, I have become so much better, and I have grown into somebody that I am so proud to be, and I am grown into, I am just so ready for this next part of my life. I'm just so grateful for Florida State to have spent five years. I mean, it's exactly where I was supposed to be in this, like, just so unbelievably grateful and just for them and for Kocha and just for a program that sets you up to be a better human is as the ultimate goal, you know, like winning the national championship is the goal, but like we're all coming out of this program as, as better human beings. And it's, it's just indescribable, but um, just very thankful. That'll wrap things up for the Florida State players. Thank you, Michaela Mack and Catherine. Uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And you can take your name tag if you like. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs> All right. Questions for Coach Alameda now? <clears throat> we'll go third row on the right. What Kat just said about the ultimate goal of this program is to 
be a better person when they leave it just for you as a coach to hear that just what does it mean to you yeah digging for tears right now aren't you yeah (laughs) Um, I mean that is our program is based on um, the core values of you know being the best version of yourself essentially and I think it's it's pretty cool and I think administrators get to go through it a little bit too but as a coach you're daily with them you become you're the mom the counselor the pitching coach the hitting coach whatever it might be dang it (laughs) So when you see them ready to take on the world, it's very heartwarming. And (laughs) I'm just very grateful that we could get here because the ultimate goal for sure as an athlete is to play at the highest level you can. And Kat's ready to go on and play pro and hopefully she gets a chance in Japan and that's her goals. And so there's definitely a side of you that wants us to be the skill set coach to get them there. But when man, they're ready to take on the world because of sport and because of what we offer them at the university and um, it's just, it's really, really, really cool. And everyone just, when you're a part of that and you see that with your colleagues, you know, it's, it's super special. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be there by their side for four or five years. Okay, we'll go second round the left. Yesterday you mentioned you wanted to see the team leave it all in the field, um, yep. win or lose. Um, do you feel like you got that effort today? 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, it was strategically we wanted to match up cat um with whoever it was may straco um and thought we'd have a chance and we had some information on jordy jordy's good um so it was our best chance you know to get to game three and uh, i thought we got some good information yesterday uh, our rookies that were in that environment came back today and they were different and um you know i thought we had a great game and Coleman doesn't rob that home run. Who knows? You know, it's a game of inches. And I know the question was asked yesterday. If Max ball is two inches on game one down the right field line, maybe it's a different game there too. So I just think the softball gods weren't with us this time around. But, boy, we laid it out there. And I'm, I'm really proud of them. And I just, um, you know, it feels really good to know that, that you bounced back and, and you were able to, to do what we did. And Kat, you know, led us the whole way there. And it was pretty special to see that in her end of career there. All right, we're going to front row left, Ryan. Ryan Aber from the Oklahoma and Lonnie. I know it's uh, really soon after mm-hmm. this thing, but when you look at that team that you faced uh, the last couple of nights mm-hmm. and, and you faced, I know, a lot of other great OU teams, mm-hmm. where does this team stack up, uh, talking about the Sooners, and, and when you look at the big picture of college softball history? Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say because they've had great ones and they've been great different ways. Uh, um, I would say this probably lineup was a little bit deeper lineup wise as tougher outs they may have more power in the lineup in 21 um I think we had a little deeper pitching probably in 21 Jordy was you know pretty good but it's hard to say they play the game hard you know it's sorry it's flies (laughs) um I think the one thing Oklahoma does and and we all try to do is they keep getting better every year so you know what they were in championships a couple years ago they're a better version of themselves you know now and we all have to do that as coaches we have to go back and we have to figure out how do we get better to get back here and the game is changing the athletes are changing um, the way we train changes you know that's one thing that they've done a really good job of is they've gotten in analytics you know at a high level and they use it and so um, you know I just think that uh, they're tough to beat um, but again a lot of fun to go against yeah second row left coach Bob Ferranti with the Osceola I know it's early to think about team 41 but mm-hmm. you're always planning and thinking ahead and giving opportunities for younger players even you know this time at Oklahoma City yeah. can you reflect on the the challenge of of building another roster for next year yeah, I mean, there's always expectation, you know. I mean, of course, last year, expectations to get past regionals, and that was the the goal, right? And then here we are. Like, we just blossomed in an environment. So you never really know as a coach what you're doing that actually clicks. Um, but, you know, we've been pretty good at building teams to flourish at the right time. And I would say that's to our entire staff, you know. So I think it's a collaborative effort, you know, when we get home and we really we do a good job of – dissecting the season we'll go through it and what was good what was what wasn't good how can we be better and how do we get better and then we put that game plan into place um september october november um replacing the innings that cat gave us going to be tough replacing what matt gave us towards the end going to be tough um we're going to have some rookies it's going to take some time to get some people in experience situations um you look at what our returning pitching staff is right now it's going to be very young 
Um, we have some offense coming back, and they'll know what this feeling's like, but we're going to have to endure figuring out what the pitching staff can do. So um, that's probably uh, you know something that we're really going to have to figure out how we do that February, March, to be able to bring it together for another run at the end of the season. Um, but after that, you know, I think we have some really talented freshmen coming in that have been texting every single day. And um, even though they're not here, they are getting videos from me of like, this is what it's like when we get here, you know. So it's like we've got the dream of where we want to be with the new ones coming in. It's just going to take work. And uh, the circle is probably one of the biggest things that we have to really figure out. Okay, well, last question, be third row left. A lot of times uh... – Younger people have a harder time seeing perspective, I guess, but it sounded like the players that came in here had a pretty good perspective on what they've accomplished, how far they've come. Is that representative of the locker room right now in, in, in that regard? Yeah, for sure. I, you know, again, I think um, we're a very honest coaching staff, and um, you know, I, I think we do a good job of letting know the players where they're at and where we see that they can go. And like Max says, you know, she didn't know she's reaching these dreams. She didn't know she's capable of. We knew she was capable of doing the things that she was doing, and so we ran out of time to get her to a level that I know she's super capable of. But boy, she helped this program a ton, and now she starts to see it. And when you can have real conversations of what I see and what they see and start to match that, their confidence as a human, as a ball player blossoms. And that's, to me, the, the secret sauce that we have is we really like get to know them as, as a human being and a softball player, and then we match that. And um, they're ready for these moments. They don't really need us in these moments, and they're ready for them, and um, they're grateful for them. So I think that's the special part when you see them graduate and they know, you know, Kat's super proud of her accomplishments. And um, I think that's a really neat feeling. All right, that'll wrap things up for Florida State. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for the week, weekend. I don't even know what day it is, but thank you for everything. Appreciate it.